Hi, we're at Index Asia 2025 in Singapore. We are now on the Saab booth, standing behind this uh, nice new model of the MRCV program for the Republic of Singapore Navy. I am with uh, Chen Shou Chu. Uh, Chen Shou, it's great to see you again. Yeah, great to see you again. We last uh, met a few years ago on board the uh, RSS Independence, Independent. a literal mission vessel. Uh, you are now with Saab. What is your role exactly? Hi, uh, thank you so much again. Uh, my role in Singapore, I'm now the country head for Sub Singapore, responsible for Sub businesses and operations in Singapore, and of course to grow Sub portfolio in Singapore. All right. So the reason I wanted to uh, talk to you is, uh, well, you have that new model uh, showcasing the MRCV design. You have a model, a larger model of the uh, composite superstructure for the MRCV. Uh, these are interesting topics to me. So first, uh, please remind us what is the role of Saab in the MRCV program? Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, Saab is indeed honored to be awarded the contract to be involved in the next generation of the RSN multi-role combat vessels. Uh, the role of Saab in this uh, program is that we are selected to be the ship's designer to, the ba to, to do the basic design of the ship in collaboration with OMT. Besides doing the basic design of the ship, we are also responsible to do the detailed design and production of the composite superstructure. For which you have a, a larger model uh, over here. So uh, please tell us a little bit about uh, this uh, superstructure. Uh, it will be uh, built in uh, Sweden or here in uh, Singapore? Yeah, so the superstructure uh, is already in production. In fact, I could share with you a little bit about the milestone. Uh, after signing the contract with DSDA, we started the detailed design from the basic design to the detailed design of the superstructure, including designing the foundation and uh, system equipment that would eventually fit onto the mast. And the detailed design was completed last year and we already started production. In fact, as we speak, uh, in January this year, we did the first composite superstructure cutting ceremony in Sweden. Uh, what is different about this superstructure construction uh, and, and delivery as compared with the littoral mission vessels that we did in the past is that these structures are a lot bigger and what we are going to do is that we are going to produce the panels, the, the composite panels uh, and deliver the panels into Singapore. And that's where we will then assemble in Singapore before we deliver to Singapore Technologies Marine. So you can imagine the idea of having flat panels of composite material, like you buy a furniture from IKEA, open up the box, follow some instruction, you know, start to fix the various panels together, glue it uh, in Singapore, and before we deliver to uh, Singapore Technology Marine. So this is a, a very unique way of uh, producing a very huge superstructure uh, in the most cost-effective uh, way. And uh, Chen Shou, to be clear, uh, you're talking about superstructure, not just the mast, because you don't just provide the top mast, but the actual uh, bridge uh, area. Yes, exactly. So when we talk about superstructure, we refer to the entire structure that you see from here, from the bridge, the wheelhouse, and all the way to the mast, and including some of the foundation and, and system around uh, the, the superstructure. So th it's this entire piece that we are talking about. Uh, lastly, Chen Shou, from a design point of view, uh, what is the main uh, challenge with uh, MRCV? Because uh, in my opinion, as, my, as I understand, this will be the very first full-fledged surface combatant acting as, as well as a mothership for uh, UXV, so underwater, under surface and in the air. So what are the main uh, challenges in designing such a unique uh, ship? Yeah, well, uh, SAP has many years been doing designing of ships from the littoral mission vessels now to the multi-role combat vessels. And we have a lot of experience in terms of designing the ship to be mission modular, to be flexible, uh, to be able to embark different types of uh, payloads, including our main system. For this particular mothership, I think what is most important is that we need to design the ship with a sufficient space to embark all kinds of uh, amend system that the customer is expected uh, to, to employ. And the ship is going to be operational for the next uh, few decades. And therefore, we need to provision the space, uh, the future growth, where amend system may evolve over the years and have the flexibility and the capability to do so. And moving mission modules around the ship 
uh, for an unmanned system is one of the key challenges that we face. So we need to design system that allows flexible movement of containers, equipment within the ship, loading and unloading, deploying and recovering of unmanned system. So I would say that this is probably one of the more challenging and exciting programs that SAP is very happy to collaborate with uh, the Defence Science Technology Agency and be part of this futuristic uh, you know, motherships or for, for UXV for the Singapore Navy. All right, Chen Shou, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, more than welcome. Thank you so much. I am now with uh, Robert Edlands, uh, Program Director for Singapore Programs uh, at SAB, COCOMS. Hello, Robert, great to see you again. Great to see you again. I wanted to talk to you uh, a little bit more about uh, SAB uh, COCOMS experience with. Uh, composite uh, structures. Uh, so what is the, uh, the history? Uh, your company has a lot of uh, experience in this, uh, in this field. Yes, uh, I would like to say that uh, we are probably one of the companies in the world with the best knowledge about carbon fiber uh, and the uh, use as composite material in shipbuilding. And uh, the VSP, classic VSP Corvette is of course well known internationally and it was very much ahead of its time and it's still an amazing ship and an amazing vessel that raises eyebrows everywhere in the world. Uh, but we have taken that through some international programs, we had some in India and then we had, as we are here in Singapore, we had the LMV program. And the LMV program uh, was a vessel that we designed together with uh, DSTA and together with uh, ST Marine. But for the carbon fiber part, um, everything above um, um, the steel line from here and up is carbon fiber. And the main reason for having carbon fiber structures on vessels is to lower the center of gravity and thereby allowing future growth for heavy equipment to be mounted. These kind of vessels are, they are operational for decades and uh, the classic fight, uh, sensors always want to be on the top. And being on the top will have the most effect on stability of the center of gravity. Thereby, you want to lower the, uh, lower the weight on high structures. On top of that, then we have the, um, uh, the fact that carbon fiber has the, uh, the property of being electric, electric conductive. That means that we can use the benefits of plastic material, but treated as if it were metallic. Thereby, we can control the radar cross-section uh, very efficiently. And also, well, carbon fiber doesn't rust, so in terms of maintenance, there's exactly. another advantage there. Exactly, in terms of maintenance, I mean, we have uh, this material here uh, in Singapore uh, with the mount counter vessels. There, this one is glass fiber, was pre-carbon fiber. Uh, but this uh, hull is still viable, still operational. So if there is any, uh, a bit humoristic, but any drawback uh, in our uh, product uh, philosophy is that we deliver things that never break, <laughs> they never degrade. So we're very happy that it, this is still operational in Singapore and in Sweden we have hulls that are even older that we just keep refitting, refitting, refitting. It never dies. Yep. Uh, Robert, so since we just talked about uh, the past, uh, so to speak, uh, what's, uh, what's next? Any other uh, ongoing programs or future programs in which uh, your uh, composite uh, structures, uh, activities uh, are involved? Yeah, other navies are uh, due to um, not only, as I said before, the reason of having light structures to be able to put heavy components in the future, um, just to keep the weight down of the entire vessel is a fuel, uh, fuel efficiency uh, parameter on it as well. So more and more navies are interested and we have recently just delivered our first mass to Squadron 2020 in Finland. Um, on that one we have gone also a, a, a different direction. They have ordered a mass from us fully integrated, meaning that we're mounting the sensors before they come to the shipyard in Finland. So a bit exaggerated, but almost plug and play, that we take the entire mast, connect all the interfaces, and then it's operational. In Singapore, they mount the sensors here, but we do the foundations for them integrated in the carbon fiber. 
and other navies, we have many navies are uh, knocking on our door for carbon fiber and our uh, production facility in Karlskrona is working 24-7 right now. It's really nice to see. And in the, in the future, you'll continue to work with uh, FMV and the Swedish Navy for their future programs as well? Absolutely, yes. We are ongoing with the Lulio class um, and uh, uh, they are looking into uh, what parts of the ship should be carbon fiber as well uh, on that one. Correct, yeah. All right, Robert, that was very interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.